Ten years ago, I rejected a 100% scholarship to study in England. I participated because I wanted to test myself as to whether I could do it. Amongst hundreds and hundreds of students at the time, I was the one selected. I was the chosen one in 2012. I was the only one who was able to get a 100% scholarship to study, but not up until my parents had to sign the paper that I told them that I couldn't do it. I was very frustrated. Everyone was so confused and so was I. I had no idea why I decided that way. My parents were so disappointed and nothing could have made me feel worse. Ten years later, ladies and gentlemen, I could say that I have made it. My name is Hang Nari. I have graduated Master of Marketing from Swinburne International University with distinction. I have gained professional experience in education and hospitality industry. And on the side, I'm also a local business council, a board member of local business council, um, involving kind of actively with stock market and residential property investment. Sounds fancy. If I've told this to my 16-year-old self, she would never ever believe that she could do it. That, looking back, I think at the time I was not ready. I felt very scared because I didn't have enough information. This idea of studying abroad was never introduced to me well enough. I was so scared of what am I going to jump into? What is it like um, studying abroad, living in a new country, living in a new environment? Everything was new. And I was scared to jump into the unknown. And if you felt that way, I am here to tell you that jump. It's OK. It's all right. It's all right to be scared. And I hope that my stories and my tips today could have helped you at least to get an idea of what is it like and the tips like can help you to be a little bit more prepared. So I would like to divide this into three parts. The first part I'm going to talk about is what sort of preparation you can do it before you are there. What can you do while you're here? I think it's very essential. It is very important to understand what you are jumping into. Academic wise, you need to know what university you are going in, of course. Um, the course that you're going to take, the subjects, the study requirements, the expectations from the university that you need to fulfill. For example, how many hours of study in a week that you need to have? What um, sort of assignments you're going to do? So in order to have all of those information, the question is, how am I getting that information? Well, to start with, I would say start within your own circle. Do you have any friends who do that? Do you know someone, or maybe just do your Facebook friends, do you know someone who is doing that or who, who have done that before? If there's no one at all, you can approach your university, the dean of the faculty, maybe they have known some students who are doing that. I have a lot of Belty students who come up to me and message me on Facebook, was like, Mong, what are you doing now? Can you share me a bit of tips, a bit of information, or maybe, um, what is the public transportation is it like there? I'm like, like, that's okay. I'm happy to tell you everything that I can. So all of this is about like what you can prepare yourself to know about the university, the, um, the, pro the study program that you can jump into. And the other basics is about like living arrangement. For instance, where are you going to live? What transportation is it like? Or maybe how's the culture is like? So now I've talked about, earlier I've talked about like reaching out to people that you know, but you can also search on the internet. Like, you know, there are YouTube videos, for example, I've done that before. Um, I search, what is it like studying there, life in Australia, life in a day, um, studying in Australia, or living in Australia. And also the website of the university is also a good place to start. I've experienced that myself. For instance, like when you check for your course and then there are many subjects, many units that you have to fulfill. So looking to that subject, read the description of like what they are, what they expect, what is the career outcome that you get out of it, what sort of knowledge are you getting out of it? And then um, starting to, you know, read some books. That's what I've done. Like because I do, um, I do marketing. There are different units like consumer behavior, strategic marketing. So I've read all the books that relate to that. So I felt at the time a bit more confident that I'm going to ace it. So now we have finished talking about the preparation. The second part is what now when you have jumped in to that journey? 
you set your foot in Australia or you set your foot in any other countries besides your own country. So what now? I understand that the first two to three months or maybe the first semester is going to be the most challenging one. Because while you're settling yourself to a completely new environment, everything is new. You have new friends, um, your living is new, the education system is new, the culture is new, everything is new. It's okay to feel a little bit uncomfortable, that's all right, it's a good thing. As we look into, it depends on how you look into that. But yeah, the, way, the best way to start, I would say, when you get into there, be positive, enjoy it, and then Go to your orientation day or maybe approach the, to anyone in the university. Of course, they will have like a student resource center for, for you. And then ask what are the services available. As for myself, in my university, they have a lot of programs, a lot of clubs, a lot of people who are there to help international students like me. They have helped me to do my assignment. Not really, they're gonna, you know, we're not gonna plagiarize, but like they, tell you how you are approaching that assignment. And then if I have any difficulty writing my assignment, maybe my grammar was not that good and that's why I didn't get a good mark. I asked them like, I asked them, how can I improve it? They even have sessions for students who are actually like poor in grammar or poor in writing. And then they help, they help me at the time and they will help you too if you reached out for help. All you have to do is just raise up your hand and say that I need help. And then that is the part of academic wise. And how about social life? Because we don't go there just to study. You know, I don't think that you just you want to go into a new country, finishing your degree and then come back home and know nothing besides school. So social socialize. How are we studying? So if you don't have your friends, like you don't have any friends at all, you can join any volunteer activities. They have social groups, they have clubs like guitar club, music club, dancing club, sports club, swimming clubs, anything that interests you, join. So that you are able to know people who, have, who might have the same like, or similar hobbies or similar interests as to you. And also like when you are studying in the class, I'm sure that when you are doing assignment, you're not doing that alone. You have your teammates. And then when you work together, you can see who are you gonna be able to you know, talk to. Knowing all of the, like knowing a lot of people can help you actually when you are, especially when you um, go, go to another country. Not only that you get the information about school, not only that you might ace, they can help you how to ace in that exam or ace in that assignment. You know, the other fun things like, if I want to eat Korean barbecue, where do I go? If I want to have a good sushi, where do I go? It's a part of the journey. I don't go there just to study. Yes, I focus on my study, but I also need my social life. And I think that you need it too, or at least you, I, maybe you, need, you don't need it, but it's a part of the journey that makes it more enjoying. So talking about all of these, those people that you know, the networks that you have, might also help you in finding a job. Because when, you, when you're there, you don't, you know, in Australia, I'm not sure about any other country, but like in Australia itself, students are able to work approximately about 20 hours a week. So, you know, when everything that we have done already, now it's time to find a job to get a bit of pocket money. Your friends might know, oh, that restaurant is finding a worker. Your other friends might know that the com that company is looking for an intern. It's pretty helpful that you get to know more people and you get, not only that they give you with those information, but if you want to search for job, they can help you where to start. Maybe you can, they can suggest you a good job listing websites or they can tell you, you know, the people that kind of like, you know, career coach available in your university or anyone that they know it could be for free. And then, yeah, that is, that is just like over again, this is the kind of um, establishment when you set your foot into a new country that I think might not, be, might not be useful for everyone, but these basic things might be helpful. So that comes and connects to the third thing that I want to mention today. It is the mindset that you have to carry while you are taking on that journey. You have to be hardworking, you have to be persistent, and you need to be positive. Like talking about finding a job, it is not easy. Those people who are studying, who, who are living there, the, like, you know, the native speaker, 
they might not be able to get the j- a good job that they want. And how about you? You know, international student, your English might not be as good as them. Your experience might not be as extensive. But then you need to be hardworking. You need, a, for example, let's say the resumes that you have. For myself, I have my one resume at the time. I wanted to find a job, any job available. I don't want to sit still and spend all my parents' money. So I put my resume into 10 cafe shops. I got rejected, all of them. They were like, they give me a call, they ask me what visa am I in, how old I am. All of them were rejected. And then, so how do I feel at the time? I'm like, I've, I've tried my best, yes, I've tried very hard to study, but why can I not get it? My gut instinct told me it's fine. Maybe there's something wrong with my resume, or maybe it is not a good place to start with. So I reached out again to the university. They have the career coach. They tell me this is not how Aussie is working. It is not how, when they see that, that resume, they're not gonna like it. So. They have looked at my resume, they give me a suggestion, I've you know, corrected it a little bit here and there, and finally I can get a job. And because of that, it has taught me that hard work and persistent. Persistent is the quality of not giving up. You do, like, you do your best in everything that you do, and then you don't accept a no. If you want it, try your best again, and again, and again, and again. I'm not gonna be here to tell you how am I gonna get my intern, not going to be here to tell you how am I going to get promoted. But one thing I can tell you is to, to work your hardest, be persistent and be positive. By being positive, I know that it's very challenging. It's very hard when you have knocked down so many times. All the negativity surrounding you, you know, the pandemic, the wars, everything that you have seen, maybe expose yourself to on social media. It's hard to get back up. It's hard to look, it's, it's hard to get back up and it's easy to look down on yourself, especially when you compare yourself with others. That's totally fine. You can have some time to cry at night. I cried at night, but that doesn't matter. Waking up the next day, the new day, I try again, keep being positive that one day I'll achieve it. So lastly, my message to everyone who's about to jump into this journey, while you are trying your best to achieve your goals, what are the goals that you have set? Don't forget to take care of yourself physically and mentally. Why? Because at the end of the day, you only have yourself. You don't want to be so successful, but you are broken down inside. You don't want to get like whatever the position that you want, but you don't have good health. You're feeling sick every day, or maybe you are so depressed. It is, it is, it is not useful. And there's other healthy way to actually achieve your goal. So lastly, don't pressure yourself too much. Work your hardest, never give up, and take care of yourself. Cheers. Thank you. Belty International University, the future of global leaders.